Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we'll be talking about Fuse Countdown. Uh, Fuse Countdown is designed by Kane Klinko and it is published by Renegade Game Studio Videos. But before we talk about that, we just want to remind you to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you can see our videos as they come out. Now, Ryan, Fuse Countdown. Yes, so. Ten. Wait, wait, hold on. So Nine. First, wait, hey, hold on. We gotta talk. We gotta talk. Eight. Wait, hold on. I gotta roll. Hold on. So I gotta seven. Talk. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Ah! <laughs> That's what it's like playing Fuse Countdown. <laughs> this is a real time cooperative dice rolling game. This is basically a standalone sequel to, uh, or expansion, standalone expansion to Fuse. This is not Fuse. This is Fuse Countdown. So you can either mix it with the base game or play it by itself. There's rules in the rulebook for both ways. All right, so in this game, basically you're rolling dice as fast as possible. You have 10 minutes to get through a whole bunch of these cards that have specific uh, things that you need to achieve on these various cards. Uh, let me give you a quick overview of how to play Fuse Countdown. Uh, we did do a previous video about Fuse, so I'll put that in the comments or in the description section down below. So if you wanna learn how to play the base game, I go there. But I'm gonna go give you a quick overview of how to play Fuse Countdown. All right, here's our setup for Fuse Countdown. Similar to regular Fuse, we've got two cards down below here that we're gonna be working on. Uh, we've got a, a more challenging one, and we've got a little bit of an easier one. As soon as we complete one of them, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these five cards that are face up and put that in front of us and replenish it with one of the cards from the stack. All right, so we've got our large bag of dice here. We also, this is a real-time game, so we also need a timer. You can use any 10 minute timer you'd like to. However, Renegade Game Studios does have a really awesome Fuse specific countdown uh, in the app store that you can get. Uh, basically it has a personality voice or a basic voice. The personality voice kind of makes fun of you along the way, which I think adds a really nice touch. So on our turn, what we're gonna do is we're gonna reach into the bag and we're gonna pull out four dice. Uh, in a two player game, each player is gonna grab two of those dice. We're gonna roll them and see if we can put them anywhere on our board. All right, so over here we have a yellow spot on our, on our little kind of a tower there. So we can take that yellow one and put it right there, which is fantastic. I'm gonna get rid of this, we're not actually gonna use it, but it is a great timer, I recommend it. All right, and then over here we have uh, four different uh, spots here that cannot have be the same equal number or color next to each other. So we can put just a black right there, and that is fine for now until we have to put some stuff next to it. And then obviously our partner who takes the other two dice. You wanna kind of trim, try to communicate with the other players because you wanna make sure that everyone is getting dice that they want and they need, but at the same time, you can't talk too much because the timer's ticking down on you. Now this is a new part of this game. There are two colored dice. They are two colored and they're both red and green in this case. So uh, it's not like if you put this here and it says it cannot be next to a red or next to another red, this would count as another red, so you could not place it there. All right, once all four of those dice have been placed, we're gonna pass the bag to the next player. They're gonna pull dice out of the bag. They're gonna roll them and the same thing. We're gonna take them until we fill up our cards. Once they have them filled up, get rid of them and pull a new one down. We'll replenish that. But if there's ever a time where you need to place a dice and you can't for whatever reason, like maybe it's a, a red two and you just have no spots for reds or twos, well then you need to draw one of these spark cards. Spark cards, you're gonna draw it and put it in front of you and it's gonna be some kind of a penalty. So before the end of the game, you need to have all of these gone. So in this case, this one says you need to have four dice you need to place there. Or maybe they act like more like a regular card. This one says you need to have two equal dice or a red and a black dice on this one, or a three plus two other random dice. So basically those cards are kind of meant to slow you down. You need to divert extra time and extra turns and extra dice to those cards. So these cards are more challenging than the original guards cards in the Fuse game. Plus now we also have these spark cards. Well, in order to help us kind of balance it out and make things a little bit easier for us, we have these different roll cards. So these roll cards say things like, before drawing dice out of the bag, name a color. You may change any rolled dice of that color to a wild color or number. So each player gets one of these cards at the beginning of the game. It's going to give them some kind of special ability that they can do in order to turn some kind of a dice wild or give them some of the kind of other benefits that's going to help out the team. They can really help things make things more flexible and also give them a little bit of asynchronous powers. Now there are lots of ways for us to lose the game. If the timer runs out, we lose the game. If there's any of these spark cards out there, we lose the game. If we don't get rid of our cards, we lose the game. Uh, however, there's only one way we win the game. That is, if we're able to get rid of our entire stack of cards, all the cards that are out there, and nobody has any spark cards in front of them before the timer runs out, that's how we win the game. There are five different levels of difficulty, so if you find that you've been playing on the easy level and you're winning all the time, feel free to bump it up to difficulty level, and you can keep on bumping it up and bumping it up until you get to the top level, and even still then, there's additional ways that you can make it harder. There's additional cards called these bomb cards that you can throw into the mix. 
whenever you see one of these cards, everyone has to get rid of a five or a six or a red that is showing. Or maybe it says something like this, all players must draw a spark card. Or you know, everybody has to get rid of a three and a yellow. So this is terrible cards that come out from the deck when you're playing with the ultra difficult modes. They're going to really mess you up. But that's all right. I like a challenging game. Throw it all at me. I'm not going to win, but I'm going to have a great time doing it. There are a lot of different symbols on the cards. So be sure to check the back of this rule book here before you start playing so you can teach everyone all the different symbols. And then also, this game does match up with the original Fuse game. You can combine those. So it gives you kind of a page in the rulebook that shows you how to combine all the two different games so that you can make one kind of giant mega game of Fuse. The split dice were such a neat idea in this game. And you're thinking to yourself, because there's like five of them. It's almost like its own color because like you're like, this is going to help me so much. But then there are cards that require split dice on them. And if you're already using your split dice to fill in something else, you're limited on what you can even do. And it's like, ah! I don't know if I can do this, but it was so much fun to see that and to see that you had these other options, but it like made it more difficult. Like it made it easier and more difficult at the same time. These spark cards that were kind of like your punishment for not being able to use dice, I thought was a very, very clever solution. Uh, basically, whenever you can't use a dice, you just take a spark card. And it just basically slows you down in some ways. Uh, when you need to, you know, use dice and you need to fulfill your own cards, instead you also have to kind of work on fulfilling these spark cards as well. Because at the end of the game, if you have any spark cards anywhere on the table, you lose the game. Even if you won the game. So you really <laughs> have to work on those as well. Which is a really succinct, fast way of getting you the information that you need to in order to keep on going through. The previous... Uh, kind of punishment, I guess, in the base game of Fuse, was this kind of this kind of weird, wonky rule where any dice that wasn't used, what you should do is you would roll that die, and then everyone at the whole table had to either discard one of their dies that matched the color or the number of that die that you rolled. Yeah. And then, so, you could lose four dice all at once, and it was kind of weird, like, well, I, have, I have a green and I have a six, so I discard both, I discard one, and the, the, when you're, you know, going that fast in a timed game, you don't have time to think about the ramifications of that. You're just going, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so having that really quick, simple punishment of having a car that's going to slow you down a little bit was a great solution to that. Um, I also really liked the new roll card. So all of these roll cards that you were given, they kind of give you an oomph in a certain area. They'll let you help with colors or re-rolling dice or grab an extra dice um, or an extra die. So I really liked that. And the reason why I liked it is because it gave you an oomph, but it didn't in any way break the game. Like I didn't feel like any of the roll cards were way too great or I'd be upset if I got one of the roll cards. I thought they were pretty well balanced and they just gave you a little boost in the game they didn't were like they weren't like now you're gonna win all the time because uh that's not how like uh ryan and i like to play co-ops that's not how fuse likes to be played either no <laughs> fuse doesn't like to be won <laughs> <laughs> uh the bomb cards themselves were kind of a big step up in complexity from the base cards the bomb cards and the base fuse which i enjoyed quite a bit there's a whole lot of new ways to look at things there's just walls you could build these kind of these ziggurat uh, configurations there's taller towers there's just these weird math equations that you had to yeah. do so there's all these different things you have going... to play here first yeah you have to play here first you have to play here last whatever the yeah. case is uh so there's a lot more going on uh uh, which I enjoyed, you know, you you want that stuff up in complexity while still being able to kind of manage all that. But um, one thing I will say is the first time you play, or the first time you play with any, any new players, yeah. on the back of the rulebook there is an extremely handy guide of all the different symbols that you might come across. You're going to want to be very familiar with those symbols because there's a lot of them and they all matter. You don't have time to pause the game and be like, oh, Here's what this symbol means. No, it's like, go, 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 who cares? Figure it out later. <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. So uh, you want to make sure everyone understands all those little symbols that might come across before the game starts. Uh, so that way you're, you're ready to roll once the timer starts. Yeah, or you can also like pause the game while you're playing the first game, like just do a practice round essentially. It's such a quick game that <laughs> you can do that for the first one and like refresh, like see it. Then do it, understand what that means, and then just like play the game for real after that. So you can um, do that as well. Okay, so what do I really think of Fuse Countdown? Let's just say if I had to choose between the two, Fuse and Fuse Countdown, I would choose Fuse Countdown. Oh my gosh, this was like, I didn't even think there's anything wrong with Fuse because there's not anything wrong with Fuse and somehow like they improved on it. 
<laughs> I really like Fuse. I really like how fast it is, how quick it is. I like the cooperative. I like how difficult it is. And you can scale that difficulty. But like Fuse Countdown was just like that, but better. And I didn't even know that you could make it better, but they did. But they also thought they made it better because um, you can combine them, like Ryan said in the beginning, if you wanted to. And they say that if you combine them to keep the spark rules when you're not able to use the dice instead of the other one. So I really like how they're like, yeah. We made a good We made We a good did this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, the King Clinko is the designer. I met him at Gen Con a few years back. And I was like, hey, man, I love you so much. You know, it's a great game. And he was like. Thanks, you know, he was just really, like, <laughs> like humble about it, which is I thought was just super, super cool. Um, so I've I've loved Fuse for a long time. This is one of my favorite real time games, uh, and uh, this just yeah, like Bethany said, just bumps it up in every way. It makes yeah. it harder and easier, you know, which yes. is exactly the kind of thing I like seeing in a in a you know sequel or a standalone expansion or you know or just a regular expansion. New challenges to face, but also new ways to deal with those challenges. I love it when those two things kind of come together, and this did it in a really great way. Super fun, super fast. Um, if you had to choose between Fuse and Fuse Countdown, like I think I already mentioned, this one does everything great. Um, yeah. It's just so, so great. I mean, if you want to want both and combine them both for a mega game, I love it. Go for it. <laughs> but Fuse Countdown is wonderful. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see your videos as they come out. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider leaving us a tip or buying us a cup of coffee. There is a link down below. Until then, you can find us in all of these places. Yes, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.